Technical progress makes it possible. Thanks to the complex investigation methods that experts can use today, it's possible to take a more detailed look than ever at the gigantic expanses of the universe. The milestones achieved through the use of increasingly modern equipment are as fascinating as they are surprising. Indeed, the first ever mapping of a neutron star's surface revealed some exciting characteristics that researchers had not anticipated in advance. Now we'll show you the details of this groundbreaking discovery. Want to learn more about the exciting discoveries and the different formations in the cosmos on a regular basis? Then subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to join us from now on, on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe. Show us with a thumbs up that you like the content of our videos. Neutron Stars and Pulsars Before we take a closer look at the work and related findings of researchers, let's first recall some basic concepts. So what are neutron stars in detail? An essential component of these astronomical objects are, as the official name already reveals, neutrons. As an electrically neutral baryon, neutrons, together with protons, are an integral part of almost all atomic nuclei and consequently of the matter we know. A neutron star, in turn, embodies a final stage in the life of a massive star. As a rule, the spherical structures have very small radii of just six to seven miles. Despite this, neutron stars have masses that can exceed those of our sun by a factor of two. They are therefore extremely compact bodies. Another characteristic of these exciting entities is the fact that they rotate around their own axis at breathtaking speeds. In fact, in 2004, some researchers succeeded in detecting a neutron star that completes more than 700 revolutions within a single second. The circumferential velocity at the equator is therefore around 42,000 miles per second. This insane speed corresponds to almost 25% of the speed of light. For a neutron star to be born, a massive star of the main sequence must reach the end of its natural evolution. Basically, two forms of neutron star formation are distinguished. The first variant refers to the case where the original star had an intrinsic mass between 8 and 12 solar masses. As a result of carbon burning, an oxygen neon magnesium nucleus is formed. The process that follows is called degeneracy among experts. In simple words, it means a state of matter which deviates from the known patterns from classical physics as a result of quantum mechanical effects. If the star then exceeds the Roche limit, which defines the stability of a celestial body in terms of internal gravitational forces and external tidal forces, a special matter transfer mechanism sets in, which eventually leads to mass loss. This causes the former main sequence star to collapse into a neutron star. The stellar relic, which in this case has about 1.25 solar masses, henceforth moves through space at a similar speed as the original star. The second way in which neutron stars are formed includes those initial positions in which the original star had more than 12 solar masses. After the formation of the oxygen neon magnesium nucleus, oxygen burning and silicon burning start here, forming an iron nucleus. If the nucleus exceeds its critical mass, it also collapses to the neutron star, which has here an intrinsic mass of more than 1.3 solar masses. A neutron star formed in this way moves clearly faster through space than the preceding star from the main sequence. Not all of them reach the record speed of the exceptional object, which rotates around its own axis at 42 2,000 miles per second, but a rotation speed of 300 miles per second is not uncommon among these fascinating celestial bodies. A neutron star that rotates particularly rapidly is called a pulsar. Typically, the symmetry axis of its magnetic field deviates from the rotation axis, a circumstance that causes pulsars to emit so-called synchrotron radiation. Usually, the corresponding radiation emission is in the radio frequency range, but sometimes it appears in the X ray range. If our blue home planet is now in the radiation field of a pulsar, it receives repetitive signals from the stellar relic. Since this characteristic reminds us of a ship receiving recurring light signals from the coast, pulsars are also called the lighthouses of the cosmos. Yet a few years ago, one particular cosmic lighthouse was to become the focus of particular scientific interest, Pulsar J0030. Mapping a Neutron Star 
Since 2017, the Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer, or NICER, has been part of the International Space Station's permanent equipment. Equipped with over 50 X-ray detectors, NICER aims to collect spectral data from neutron stars and elevate our understanding of their exotic matter to a whole new level. The aforementioned pulsar J0030 could also be comprehensively observed with the help of the complex instrument. Two international teams were involved in the investigation of the structure, which is located about 1100 light years from Earth in the constellation Pisces. The experts from the University of Amsterdam and the University of Maryland examined the X-ray light from J0030 and checked which changes it had undergone over time. In this way, the experts were ultimately able to achieve an unprecedented milestone in astronomical research, the complete surface mapping of a neutron star. The unexpected? In the course of their work, both research teams came across some striking details that really shook up our previous knowledge about these extreme objects. The mystery of the hotspots. Just like black holes, neutron stars are incomparably dense. In fact, they are the densest known objects that do not have an event horizon. Due to the enormous gravity of neutron stars, space-time in their immediate vicinity is bent, a circumstance that allows researchers to glimpse the other side of the object, even when it's actually spinning out of sight. This natural effect, meanwhile, also causes neutron stars to always appear slightly larger than they actually are. This is an obstacle that has been successfully overcome by the use of NICER. The instrument is capable of measuring the pulsar's emissions with extreme precision. In this way, the scientists were able to determine the true size of the pulsar under study with unprecedented accuracy. During their observations, the experts determined that J0030 has 1.3 to 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. The width of the astronomical body, in turn, amounts to about 16 miles. To the classification, with somewhat less inherent mass, the Sun possesses a diameter of scarcely 900,000 miles. The corresponding values were therefore numbers which agree with our common understanding of neutron stars and did not surprise the scientists very much. The next step of the researchers was to map the positions of the hotspots on the surface of the pulsar. The conventional wisdom among experts was that there should be exactly two of these regions, one at each magnetic pole. As the pulsar rotates on its axis at breathtaking speed, the hotspots shoot out characteristic radiation into the vast expanses of the cosmos. Since the northern hemisphere of J0030 is oriented towards our blue home planet, Scientists expected to detect a hotspot near the northern pole. Performing this conceivably challenging endeavor again required supercomputer modeling. Ordinary computers would have taken about a decade to complete the task. The expert supercomputer managed to map the hotspots in less than a month. A surprising find. The data the experts were ultimately confronted with, however, should paint a picture that is both surprising and puzzling. J0030 has not just two, but possibly three hotspots, all of which are located in the southern hemisphere of the pulsar. The University of Amsterdam team concluded that the celestial body has a small, circular hotspot that is complemented by a crescent-shaped spot that revolves around the pulsar's lower latitudes. In turn, the findings of the Maryland team of experts said that the X-ray emission could alternatively emanate from two oval hotspots in the southern hemisphere and a cold region near the southern pole. Even if the two results of the research groups differ from each other in detail, they still have one fundamental fact in common. The findings obtained simply do not match the picture of pulsars that the scientific community has had up to now. This is a very exciting fact, which suggests that the magnetic field of neutron stars, which forms the corresponding hotspots, is subject to much more complex mechanisms than scientists had previously assumed. There is no question that this new finding is an astronomical mystery, yet it also shows the researchers that they are on the right track. For example, the use of NICER could one day help provide a revealing answer to one of the most central questions in astrophysics. What is the shape of matter in the extremely dense cores of neutron stars? Consequently, the mapping of pulsar J0030 represents only the beginning of an intriguing research path. In the future, astronomers will 
will try to extend the knowledge gained by studying other neutron stars to understand even better how these mysterious celestial bodies actually work. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the fascinating surface mapping of the neutron star and the knowledge gained through it? Drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Are you in the mood for more exciting posts about the groundbreaking discoveries in space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.